Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're taking a look at the cardiac cycle. This is a great way to make sense of what's happening both electrically and mechanically in the heart. So looking at the conduction system and then the contractions that follow. All right, let's take a look. So to begin, you can see I've drawn up one, two, three, four, five hearts. And it's going to show what's happening at the heart at different stages of what we call that cardiac cycle. But to begin, we need to understand what's happening electrically in the heart because the electrical or the conduction system of the heart precedes the contraction or the mechanical aspects of the heart. So we need to understand how they link in order to show where they link. So first thing is, I hope you've got an understanding of an ECG trace. If not, don't stress, we'll go through the basics of it. First thing is, if you look at an ECG trace from what we call lead two, you tend to have something that looks a little bit like this. You see these peaks and troughs, like that. Now this is happening over time, and this is from an ECG, an electrocardiogram, and it's measuring the conduction, the electrical events in the heart. If we were to take a heart, for example, so I'm gonna draw a heart like this, and I'm gonna draw a very simplistic version of it. Perfect, like that, and I'll just draw that for the valves. We know that the heart, in order for it to contract, an electrical signal needs to propagate through it, and we call this a depolarization event. If you want to know more, watch my video on cardiac action potentials. It goes through all the details of that. But for this video, we need to know that there is a node here called the SA node. And that SA node will spontaneously send an electrical signal, like I said, called depolarization. And that wave of depolarization spreads through the heart muscle of the atria in a manner like this. Now, remember, if you watch my ECG video, I told you the ECG cheat sheet, that if you have depolarization going in the direction of an ECG lead, you get a bump up on the ECG. Okay. If you get a depolarization event going away from the lead, it's probably unsurprising that you get a dip down on the ECG. So in this case, we're going to look at the typical lead that people look at in an ECG trace, which we call lead two. And lead two looks at the heart from this perspective. So what you can see here, the electrical signal or depolarization event that's happening from the SA node through the, my, uh, the myocardium, the muscle of the atria, goes in the direction of the lead. So we get a bump up on the ECG. So when the atria depolarizes, we get this wave here. That's our bump up. We call that the P wave. And the P wave, like I said, represents atrial depolarization. Brilliant. Then what you'll see is that there's a fibrous tissue here that the electrical signal cannot move past. What it does is the electrical signal funnels through another node, which we call the AV node. And that takes a little bit of time. So what we end up getting is this flat line. So this flat line is telling us what's happening with the conduction going through the AV node. Then what we get is once it's moved through the AV node, it moves through some more conduction branches of the heart. And we've got branches that look like this, which we call the bundle branches. And the depolarization event moves through the bundle branches like this. Now, if you have a look, that is away from the heart. And because this septum isn't very big, it's sharp and it's, 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 it's short, not sharp, it's short and it's sharp, which means a depolarization event away from the lead, you get a bump down. There's our short, sharp bump down. We call that the Q wave. And that Q wave is representative of septal depolarization. Septal depolarization, great to know. All right, then this electrical signal, this depolarization event spreads through what we call the Purkinje fibers in a fashion 
like this. Now you might be thinking, right, these ones are going towards the lead, these ones are sort of going away from the lead, what do we get? Remember, the left ventricular wall is three times thicker than the right. So whatever is happening here is overwhelming what's happening anywhere else. So we get a depolarization event in the direction of the lead, thick myocardium of the ventricles, so you get a very big bump up on the ECG, and that's this bump up here, and that's the R wave. That's representative of ventricular depolarization. Okay, brilliant. Then we need to depolarize the rest of the heart, which is the rest of the walls here. That is short and sharp and it's away from the lead. So we get that final wave there, which we call the S wave. As you can see, going from Q to R to S, that's septum, most of the muscle, and then the end of the muscle, that is all of this in actual fact from the Q, R and S. So the Q, R and S together, we call the Q, R, S complex. And the whole thing represents ventricular depolarization. Brilliant. Now what we get is a break. Everything's depolarized. Brilliant. We need to reset the heart now. So we've got a little break there where nothing's happening, but now we need to reset it. And when we reset it, we need to repolarize the heart. And the repolarization event for the heart starts where it finishes and has a big wave that moves backwards. So repolarization moves like this. And as you can see, that's away from the lead. Repolarization to reset. So if depolarization in the direction of the lead gives you a bump up, repolarization in the direction of the lead will give you a bump down and repolarization away from the lead will give you a bump up. In this instance, we've got repolarization mostly away from the lead and we get the bump up, right? So this is what we call the T wave and it's representative of ventricular repolarization, resetting of the heart. Now what have we done? We've set up our electrical scene. But what is the importance of understanding what's happening electrically? Because what follows is the mechanical function of the heart, contraction. So now what I wanna do is look at what's happening in the heart and correlate that to different phases of the ECG trace. So let's start here. What can the heart do? Well, it can either contract, which we call systole or systole, or it can relax, which we call diastole or diastole. So we're gonna start with Diastole, relaxation. So I'm gonna write that down. So we're gonna start with diastole. The heart is relaxed. And what's happening in this particular phase? We've got ventricular filling. So blood is moving into the ventricles passively. As you can see, it's coming up on the right hand side, but it's passively moving into the ventricles and it's gonna be happening on the left hand side as well. Now there's no contraction in this process, but blood is starting to fill the ventricles. So we call this, again, ventricular filling. So we have ventricular filling, a passive process. It's diastole. All right, what's the next step? Well, once we've filled the ventricles, we want the ventricles well, actually, we haven't finished filling the ventricles, have we? Because we need the atria to contract to try and push the remaining blood into the ventricles. So the next step here is we need the atria, the muscle of the atria, to contract. And this is obviously not a diastolic phase. This is a systolic phase, but it's systolic for the atria. And so what we call this is atrial contraction. And what do you think is happening in atrial contraction? The blood is going from the atria into the ventricles in an active process to try and fill up the ventricles to their fullest capacity. So a couple of things here. There's valves in the heart, one-way valves. You've got the valves that separate the, at let's look at it here, the atria from the ventricles. We call them the AV valves. You've got the tricuspid on the right, bicuspid on the left. And you've got the semilunar valves. 
You've got the pulmonary semilunar valve here at the trunk and the aortic semilunar valve here at the aorta, aortic trunk. It's important to know what's going to be open and closed at what time. So let's start here with ventricular filling. If we were to write up uh, AV valves, so atrioventricular valves, and SL for semilunar valves, are they going to be open or closed? So let's begin. When it, we look at the AV valves, well, they're open, right? Because it's filling. So the AV valves are open. What about the semilunar valves? Well, they're going to be closed because they only let blood up through this way and no blood's going out through that way. So they are closed. Easy. Let's now have a look at atrial contraction. It's going to be the same thing. The blood is moving through the AV valves, so they're open, but the blood is not moving through the semilunar valves, so they are closed. Great. Let's keep that in mind. Now, once we've got atrial contraction, the ventricles are as filled as they possibly can be. Remember, we call this preload. They're as filled as they could possibly be. The ventricles have a nice stretch to them, and now the ventricles want to contract. So now we are looking at a systolic phase for the ventricles. And so now we've got ventricular contraction. But what's happening here is in a very short period of time, there's a time in which the ventricles contract and as the blood pushes up just before it exits, it completely fills the ventricles like this. So you've got blood completely filling the ventricles, but none has ejected, which means that the AV valves now close because we don't want blood to regurgitate back into the atria. So the AV valves, they shut. All right, they close. That's good to know because we can write here, AV valves closed. And what about the semilunar valves? Well, they're closed too because blood has not yet ejected from them. So the semilunar valves are still remained closed. Now keep this in mind because what we've just done, open, open, close, 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 close. So we've just shut the door. Keep that in mind. We'll go come back to it in a sec. We call this isovolumetric contraction. Isovolumetric contraction. Simply iso means same. Same volume at contraction. So the, the ventricles are basically filled with blood just before ejection, right? Nothing's ejected. All right, next point is we now need to overcome that point and we have ejection. Remember, that's just a fraction of a time period. Now we've got ventricular ejection. Ventricular ejection. Now remember, this was systole. And so is this. Both are systolic phases. And again, we've got the ventricles contracting really, really hard in this instance. And what's going to happen with the blood? The blood is going to move up and out through the semilunar valves to go to either the lungs or to go to the rest of the body. So that blood is now moving up. What's happening with these AV valves? They're shut. AV valves are closed but the semilunar valves now are open. So AV valves closed, semilunar valves, they're now open. Okay, brilliant. We're on the last phase. We've had ventricular ejection, the blood has ejected. Now what needs to happen? Now we have that passive process of filling again. And you might think, well, we did filling, but there's, a, there's another phase immediately before this particular phase of filling. So now we're in diastole, it's relaxation, right? It's relaxing and the blood is now entering again to fill, but where's it filling? It's going to be coming in and it's going to be filling the atria. The blood's going to be coming in and filling the atria, right? And the blood here wants to fall back down right? That blood that didn't get fully ejected wants to fall back down and closes the semilunar valves, right? So what do we find here? We find the AV valves 
blood hasn't entered them yet, so they're closed still. And the semilunar valves now close as well, because the blood's about, remember, they don't let blood fall back down. So they're closed now too. What am I trying to highlight by showing you all this? A couple of important points. When you open a door, it doesn't make much sound. But when you close it, it does. So when you close a valve, that's when you hear a heart sound. Where do the valves close? Let's first look at the AV valves. Open, open, closed. This is where we hear the first heart sound. Great. Then let's look at the semilunar. Close, 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 open. We don't hear it because opening a door's quiet. Close. This is where we hear the second heart sound when you close the door. So under isovolumetric contraction, you hear your first heart sound. Your first heart sound. S1. First heart sound. Here at, oh, I didn't tell you what it was called. I'm so sorry. This is called isovolumetric relaxation. Isovolumetric relaxation. Same, same volume, right? It's similar to this process here. Nothing's entering, nothing's leaving, right? This, nothing is entering in regards to the semilunar valves and nothing's leaving in regards to going into the ventricles. Isovolumetric contraction. So this is where you hear the second heart sound, S2. All right, but how does this correlate with the ECG? So when you have an electrical event, it will immediately be followed by a mechanical event. So if we start with ventricular filling, there's no electrical event happening in this process. No electrical event. But there is for atrial contraction. For the atria to contract, you needed the atria to depolarize first. For the atria contract, to contract, that needs to happen first. So it's not gonna happen at the same time. So what you can draw up here is a line. If we wanna connect this line here, this event is gonna start round about halfway through atrial depolarization. And when is it gonna finish? It's gonna finish because the next is ventricular. Round about halfway through ventricular depolarization. Because remember, when the ventricles depolarize, then they contract, which is what's happening here. So this starts about halfway through the QRS complex. And what happens in this process? Well, you've got contraction here and contraction here. But I told you isovolumetric contraction is a very short period of time, and it is. So what you're gonna find is that this is going to be a very short period of time for the ECG. This is still contraction, and this contraction continues all the way up until we start the repolarization, the T wave, right? And then what we get is that isovolumetric relaxation. But I said, these events are, they happen in short periods of time. So if I were to just wipe this off for a second, so I can show you this one, short period of time, like that. And then what's following that? The rest of the ventricular filling. So ventricular filling is going to be here, moving across to here. So what you can, so I think the easiest way to remember this is anytime you have a contraction, it's going to follow a wave and it generally starts halfway through the wave. So atrial contraction starts half, halfway through the P wave. Ventricular contraction starts halfway through the QRS complex. And because that's just atrial contraction there, it goes for this period. These both two are systolic phases of ventricular contraction. So effectively, they both go from the middle of the QRS complex to the middle of the T wave. And then relaxation happens following that. Now let's look at the heart sounds. When can you hear a heart sound regarding the ECG? You should hear S1 at around about halfway through the QRS complex. You should hear S2 at some point after the T wave. Brilliant, some point from halfway through the T wave. This is an overview of the cardiac cycle. I'm Dr. Mike and I really hoped it helped. Thank you.